Hello, and welcome back to XRP Vault, where we bring you the most recent and intriguing XRP news. We're giving away 10,000 XRP to those who are watching. All you have to do is upvote, subscribe, comment XRP is king, and watch the video to the end, to the end to be eligible. The winners will be picked next month and publicized on the community page of the channel. Recent developments in the Ripple SECC case are great. John Dean is putting up a wall against the SEC. I want to demonstrate the significant advancement we recently experienced since it will help prove that XRP is not a security of the Ripple network. Guys, I also want to show you a recent David Schwartz creation. David Schwartz just warned us to be on the lookout for something significant during the next few days. That and the enormous black swan that is currently building in our financial system will be discussed. Guys, we just learned some brand new information that suggests a significant market. Moving event may be imminent. I want to start off this video by discussing a topic that will have a significant impact on the triple sec case. And the judge has just granted John Dean's request to intervene in the library lawsuit. For those of you who don't know, this is incredibly huge news. John D. has joined the library law suite after the library lost to the after the library lost to the SEC. The court has made it abundantly obvious that all of the LBC tokens sold by the library was a securities transaction and the library will be held accountable for this. The status of the LBC token possessed by various LBC users, however, is something that the court never formally decided. One of these individuals was a woman by the name of Naomi Brockwell and John D.E.E.N is currently advocating on her behalf to explain why the LBC token she possesses is not a security of the library, John D., and just received authorization to represent Naomi Brockwell in this matter. Therefore, the classification of a cryptocurrency traded on the secondary market is of great importance to the court. This is great news because it indicates that the judge is willing to consider the idea that LBC traded on the secondary market may not have the same status as LBC sold by the firm Library. Guys, John D. absolutely played a 4D chess move here, and he really made a mess of the SEC in this situation. This is because the SEC will now need to provide instructions on what constitutes secondary sale. And guys, let me explain why they won't be the library's security when this issue is resolved because the library will be declaring bankruptcy. As a result, the SEC would have to claim that Naomi Brockwell's ELP token is a security of a nay defunct corporation. This is comparable to the SEC declaring that even if Exxon was no longer in business, the gas in my car at home is a security of Exxon. It is completely illogical. Exxon owes me nothing at all. I receive no compensation from Exxon for having gas in my driveway. Parked car. There is no investment contract. Hence, this theory is completely ridiculous. The judge in this case will now see it more clearly than ever before that the LBC token available on the secondary market cannot be a security of the library. For Ripple's lawsuit against the SEC, this is excellent news. Because, gentlemen, if the LBC token, which is traded on the secondary market, is not a security you and I own, is also not a security, then the XRP you and I own is also not a security. Guys, Judge Torres is an extremely intelligent individual. She is an extremely wise judge. And when she does, it will become abundantly evident that XRP is not in any way a security ripple. However, in the beginning, this does not exclude ripple from their own sales. They could be penalized for that. The good news is that ripple will be able to handle the fine. You're probably thinking that the SECC is only suing ripple for $2. 
two cents million, not two dollars, two cents million, not two dollars, two seem won't receive all of it because half of their allegations have already been proven false. But more significant than that is the fact that Ripple has an NFT fund worth $250 million. The Ripple guys have the cash to invest that much in an NFT fund. They might perhaps provide a sizable sum of money to the SEC in order to determine their punishment for their early XRP sales. This means that, unlike with libraries, the SEC won't be able to eliminate Ripple. Thus, even if Ripple is penalized for its early sales, it will be abundantly evident that the XRP currently being traded is not a security of the corporation Ripple. And guys, that is a major victory for Ripple, you and I. Guys, this is excellent news. How intelligent John D.N. is beyond belief. Everyone wrote the library off and claimed it was a huge loss for cryptocurrency, but folks John D. and turned it around. The SEC is currently in a precarious position where it appears they will have to concede that neither the secondary market trading of LBC nor the secondary market trading of XRP constitutes a security. Guys, we will receive a response to John's DNS move in approximately a week. It will be fascinating to see what the SACC has to say about this. They're going to try to twist John DNS's reasoning, maybe even lie to try to get out of this. I have a feeling. We'll have to test that to see if it works. The SAC is the best person to lie and attempt to distort someone else's argument. Let's hope the judge is paying attention and prevents that from happening. But guys, generally, John D. made a tremendous effort. Additionally, I think it's a positive indicator that the judge is allowing John D. to defend this point because I want to speak about a huge hint that David Schwartz recently drew for us moving forward. But before I do that, I need to explain why he gave us this indication in the first place. It all started with Charles Hoskinson once more losing it over the XRP community. Guys, Charles already promised to quit discussing XXRP, but he didn't. Then he lost it once more, had a mini meltdown, and declared that Ada would never again work on anything XRP related. This assertion is totally ludicrous to begin with. Additionally, as we all know, Pretending to be the CEO of ADA is a bad idea if the SEC wants to pursue legal action against you. But regardless of this, he is the CEO of a legitimate company. Thus, it makes no difference. So, I don't know why Charles Hoskinson is fighting with arbitrary trolls on Twitter. It's totally crazy. No, CEOs are seen doing this extremely unprofessional that, and I honestly don't understand this guy's issue. If you're so angry with the XRP community, ignore them and go about your business. However, this individual feels the need to make all of these comments in an effort to re-enter the conversation, but he's pulling us all into it at once. Many members of the XRP community have yet to communicate with Charles. And for some reason, he's getting angry with them all because the man is experiencing a mental breakdown. It's totally crazy. The good news is that as a result, David Schwartz did give us some delicious information. But I have to point out something ridiculous first. One of the things Charles did mention, according to him, was the lack of usability and genuine value of XRP. I also wonder how he explains why ADA only has half the market capitalization of an asset that is neither usable nor being used, as Stephanie, who bears so rightly pointed out, as this is hilarious and really demonstrates Charles' character. It circles back. He is now claiming that XRP has no practical use, although it has no value. Its market valuation is quadruple that of ADA. Does that imply that a DEA? Does that imply that ADA is even less valuable than XRRP, which already has no value? 
because it is completely illogical. I don't get how you can conduct so many ads on his position when he's only attempting to find XRP. I just recently posted this on my channel. He was explaining how XRP was useful, how it was decentralized, and how it was being used. And now we have another advertisement where he suddenly becomes really emotional. He made up a question regarding XRP. In any case, I couldn't give a damn if the guy is a clown. I'm not going to try to modify that in any way. David Schwartz did, however, respond. This is the juicy part, though. He advised waiting a few days, reading this tweet again, and considering whether those are the exact words you want to use. Guys, I'm quite interested to learn what David Schwartz is alluding to in this sentence. In the next few days, there appears to be significant development on the XR par front, and I'm eager to find out what this is. Now, I don't believe that this is specifically related to a single SEC lawsuit. I believe it might be related to the automated market maker. However, David Schwartz seems to be quite confident in this situation. So let's see what happens. He undoubtedly posted this in an effort to criticize Charles. I'm excited to see what is dropped here, people. If it wasn't anything significant, David Schwartz wouldn't be chirping at Charles with this. So let's see what happens, guys. Definitely something to look forward to is this. Now that this week is approaching, the SEC will respond to John D. next week. So guys, there are definitely some interesting developments on the horizon. Guys, before I wrap up this video, let me show you the potential indicator that just flashed and might be a sign that the economy is on the verge of a catastrophic disaster. As I've been demonstrating to you over the past few weeks, our financial system is plagued by numerous liquidity problems. But the Federal Reserve's discount window has been reopened, which clearly illustrates the significant attention being paid to the financial system's liquidity. Now, folks, I won't waste your time by trying to explain what this implies, but have a look at the past two occasions when the discount window was open. 2008 and COVID are both available. The discount window is ratcheting back up. As you can see, guys, and that has never been a healthy indicator for our financial system. Guys, what is going to directly destroy it? Who knows? But it would be incredible if we could simply take the bandage off and move on. It seems to me that the Federal Reserve is entirely set on waiting till something breaks or is ready to break before they start lowering interest rates. Guys, I know it's scary and things might get nasty, but just remember that this is one of the final things we need to happen for this market to bottom, and it appears that we are very near to seeing a decline in crypto assets.